Did you see the latest Nintendo newsletter? Whoa, nice graphics. I'd like to get my hands on that game. You mean you haven't played it yet? We can play it on my Nintendo Entertainment System. It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ghana are pretty bad. <laughs> Wrong, mother... The Legend of Zelda does not deserve the love it gets. Coming up on my unpopular gaming opinion. The 80s and 90s were great times to be a kid. Join me as I dive into the world of movies, music, video games and toys, and explore what made these decades so great. This is The Big Retro Show. Hey, what's up you guys? This is Los from The Big Retro Show, back at you with another unpopular gaming opinion. Today on my unpopular gaming opinion, we're going to be talking about one of the most favorite games of the Nintendo Entertainment System library, among many gamers. Released in 1986, The Legend of Zelda was groundbreaking for its time. But that doesn't mean that everyone was a fan of The Legend of Zelda. And here to talk to you about that is my boy, Chronic Spartan Gaming. Okay, unpopular gaming opinion. I think this might upset a few people. I just want to say first, where's from Gaming Off The Grid? Tom from Do You Nerd? I'm sorry, but I don't like Zelda the first game. Zelda the first game. Recently, I've been playing Zelda Link's Awakening. And I'm absolutely loving that game. It's my first Zelda game. I've also started dabbling a little bit in Twilight Princess on the Wii with my son. And we're really enjoying that as well. I've heard so much about Zelda over the years and it's a franchise I always intended to get into because it always sounded like it had an amazing story to it. I remember Ocarina of Time was the first one that I really took notice of. And the idea of the world, the lore and the story just really intrigued me. So when I first thought about playing a Zelda game, I'm a bit of a completionist. I like to I like to experience franchises from the beginning. And so I thought, I'm gonna go straight in, play Zelda 1 on the NES. And I tried it and I just died. And I went back to the beginning, I just kept on dying. And it was just so repetitive and there was no story. I just, I just didn't enjoy it at all. So I put it down and I thought, maybe it just wasn't the right time for me to play it. I tried it again a couple of years later and it was just the same thing. I don't know, it just, to me it felt shallow and a bit one-dimensional. I understand there's a whole world to explore. I understand as well at the time how groundbreaking it was and a part of me wishes that I played it back then because I can imagine I was playing I was playing Super Mario Brothers back then and I can imagine had I have started playing Zelda that kind of gameplay experience the difference that is to Super Mario Brothers and the, the different type of game it was compared to all other games at the time I think it would have blown my mind and I think I could have really enjoyed it and enjoyed that experience. Super Mario Brothers, you'd play a few levels, you'd, you'd lose your lives, you'd die, you start at the beginning again. I was more used to that kind of gameplay and I think I could have been more forgiven of Zelda back then. But now, 20, 30 years later, and I've experienced a lot of video games and I've started to really, I've started to understand the games and my niche of games that I really enjoy. If they're not pure action ones, they're the ones that have got a really solid, really deep storyline. And so for me, story is the thing that I really look for in games. So now, when I go back to a game like Zelda, the first Zelda, and I try and play a game like that. It's got the old school gameplay mechanics where you die and you start from the beginning again. Not really the kind of save states or the, the, the level progression that we've got these days with games. And it doesn't have a story to really, to really pull it along. I understand what pulls it along for people and, and the intrigue is the exploration. Zelda's a game of exploration, finding those hidden hidden entrances in, 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 in the walls or in finding like what's hidden behind a rock and just exploring the world and and, and it's a bit of like a, I suppose a sandbox experience but without that storyline it's just not a game I can get into it it's not a game I can enjoy so when it came around to the time of me deciding to to give Zelda another chance to give the franchise another chance and really try and get into it I decided this time I'm just gonna completely forget the original Zelda. I know that probably sounds blasphemous to so many people, but I'm just gonna forget it. 
and I'm gonna go for a game that I know is much more in my kind of in my kind of lane in, in the style of games that I think I would enjoy and that's why I went for Zelda Link's Awakening and for me that's perfect. That for me, that game is a game that inspires exploration. You, you want to see what's behind every rock. You want to see where hidden keys are, what maybe is hidden doorways, or you want to explore different different caves and see what's really going on in that world. But along with it, there's a little story that keeps it going. You wake up, you haven't got your sword, you haven't got a shield or anything, and you start exploring and you find your sword, you find your shield. And the best thing is, when you die in the game, or, or, or when you lose in the game, you just go back to the last cave that you were at. You have to start from the beginning, because everything you did up until that point is remembered, it's part of the story, it's part of the experience. It makes it feel more like a little real world that you're living in. And so for me, it's been the perfect game to start my Zelda experience. Maybe one day, I'll end up giving Zelda another chance. Maybe one day after I've really gotten into the world of Zelda and really started to appreciate everything about it, I'll be able to go back to that original Zelda and appreciate where it came from. Because I do respect it. Don't get me wrong, I respect that game greatly. But for me personally, I don't like it. And that's my unpopular gaming opinion. Thank you so much for having me on The Big Retro Show. It's been a pleasure and I hope I've not upset too many of you. Thank you so much, Chronic, for sharing that unpopular gaming opinion. I know this one is going to be a little bit polarizing. Now, as I mentioned before, The Legend of Zelda was one of the best games for the Nintendo Entertainment System. It was actually one of the first games that I got for my NES back in the day. So this game was released in 1986 and it blew my mind. And that's because the game was plated in gold. That's right, The Legend of Zelda was one of the very first games that came in gold for the Nintendo Entertainment System and it was something special back then and that's because all of the other cartridges were, were just a, a bland gray coat. This one was coated in gold so you knew it had to be special. The other reason for this game uh, being one of the, my favorites is that it came with a battery. That's right, a battery and these are small things, right? But games like Metroid and Kid Icarus would force you to learn these elaborate passwords that sometimes, you know, you would write the password down, but sometimes being a kid, you would lose the password and then lose all of your progress. But not so with The Legend of Zelda, because The Legend of Zelda let you save in three save slots and it saved your progress for you. So there were no messy passwords for you to remember and have to keep safe, um, and you would not lose your progress. You know, I can remember entering uh, the very first screen of, of The Legend of Zelda is a, a, a scene where a hole is, and you're like, okay, so what is in this cave hole that is on the screen? So you enter and there's this old dude there that tells you, you know, it's dangerous out there, don't go without the sword. And that is your very first weapon. And that brings me to my next point, why I think The Legend of Zelda is an awesome game. And that is because of the variety of the weapons. I mean, not only did you have a sword, but you had a boomerang and bombs and you had all you had a flame that you can burn bushes with and find secrets which you know is a good segue to my other point about the game was the amount of secrets in this game was mind-blowing i remember spending afternoons on the nintendo bombing different uh, caverns bombing different uh, uh, rock walls and burning bushes just trying to find all of the secrets and when you found one of the secrets it would make that distinctive zelda noise and you knew that you had found a secret just by hearing that noise and it was almost like winning the lottery as a kid playing this game because you found a secret. So I would spend my afternoons as a kid just trying to find all the secrets and trying to find and upgrade all of my weapons. That was another awesome aspect of the game was that you could upgrade your boomerang, you could upgrade your sword. It was amazing. You could um, get heart containers with add, which added extra hearts to your life bar and it was it was amazing. It was groundbreaking at the time. It was the very first RPG that I played on the Nintendo Entertainment System and one that has carried me over uh, through adulthood because I am a big fan of that kind of game where 
you are overhead view and you are controlling one person and that person you know you know they have this epic quest to accomplish and I know uh, Chronic Spartan was telling us that there wasn't much of a story uh, there for him to kind of hook him in um, another thing about this game is that it actually did have a story that was written in the instruction manual. Um, back in the day, every game came with an elaborate instruction manual and Zelda's was a huge instruction manual. And so the story was right there in the instruction manual, but a lot of the games now don't come with instruction manuals. So it's, it's a sign of the times, right? Um, Zelda, the game itself, didn't have per se any cutscenes or anything kind of to to tell the story through so you know they could have done a lot better job doing that and I, I will agree with Chronic about it and the other thing that I agree with Chronic about it is that you kind of had to grow up playing this game to really appreciate it so people that didn't grow up playing The Legend of Zelda probably don't understand the fandom that people have with the game like myself but hey, I understand that The Legend of Zelda is not for everybody. And you know, Chronic Spartan Gaming is entitled to his opinion. And if you haven't checked out Chronic Spartan Gaming's channel, go ahead and give it a look. He does a lot of interesting content. He has a lot of interesting product reviews, a lot of game reviews. He has a feature on there where it's a kind of like a versus uh, feature in which he pits two YouTubers together. That's very entertaining to watch. And he also has a game story feature that he does on his channel. And that is very interesting hearing the stories of the guests that he has on there. So make sure you go to his channel, check it out, give him a subscription, give him a like, drop a comment. You know how it goes guys. I will leave a link to his channel in the description of this video and show him some love. And if you would like to be a guest on the Big Retro Show's My Popular Gaming Opinion, simply send me an email to bigretroshow at gmail.com and we will have you as a guest. Well, anyways guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Big Retro Show. If you agreed with Chronic Spartan Gaming's opinion, let me know in the comments. And if you didn't agree with it, let me know in the comments too. And with that guys, I bid you a farewell and I will see you next time on the Big Retro Show. Mm -hmm.